But can you breathe? Rebecca of Pocket Full of Posies. Today's project is a little bit different. It is all about singing in different historical corsets. A while back, I told some people that I know that I was going to do an experiment and wear a corset for a week and see how I felt. The most common responses I got were, why would you torture yourself like that? And, you're a voice teacher. How are you going to sing? <laughs> My week of corset wearing went well and I didn't encounter any problems breathing or singing, and in fact my back felt better overall. So for this corsetry in motion challenge, I thought I would delve a little bit deeper and try performing in three different historical corsets or stays. And I wanted to see how my body would feel singing and breathing in the stays or corsets from three different time periods while singing songs or arias from those time periods. While you may not consider singing a particularly strenuous activity, classical singing does require training, good breath support, and proper technique. It's certainly not a secret that opera singers have sung in corsets or stays for as long as there have been opera singers. <laughs> And so I just wanted to see the difference different corsets or stays would make to my singing. First up, my 18th century stays and an aria, Porgi Amor, from Le Nozze di Figaro by Mozart, The Marriage of Figaro. And this opera was composed by Mozart in 1786. has long lines and that requires a good amount of breath control. I did run out of air a few times during rehearsal but I don't know that that was the fault of the stays or me just not preparing my breath early enough in some instances. Overall the stays did not restrict my breathing. I was very very comfortable in them and I didn't have any problems singing at all. They're not laced tightly, just tight enough to give proper support and achieve the proper silhouette. Overall, I would give these a 9 out of 10 for comfort and a 9 out of 10 for singing ease. Next up are my Regency long stays and an arietta called Nel Corpio Non Mi Sento. It was composed in 1788. This was a very popular tune and Beethoven also composed six variations of this tune for piano in 1795. So I felt like it would be a good one to do in my Regency stays. aria is also a very fun one to sing. The lyrics are a little sad. They're not particularly joyful, but the accompaniment is very happy sounding and upbeat. So I chose to interpret this in a kind of flirtatious manner. I found singing in these stays to actually be less comfortable than the 18th century stays that are fully boned. Now these are not fully boned, of course. Uh, they have boning in each of the seams and a wooden busk down the center front and I also have 
two extra bones that are on either side of the center front, kind of halfway between the center front and the side seams, just for a little extra support. And then they also have two bones on either side of the lacing holes in the back. I think the wooden busk is what made them more uncomfortable to sing in. I could breathe fine and I didn't have any trouble getting enough air and singing was pretty easy in them, but when I took those deep breaths and my torso expanded, I felt a little bit of a pinch or discomfort from the busk on my stomach. I would give these a 7 out of 10 for comfort level just because of that pinching I felt when I was breathing deeply. But for singing ease, as far as being able to breathe and that kind of thing, I would give them a 9 out of 10. I didn't have any trouble singing in them at all. And finally, my mid-Victorian corset and a German art song. I sang Liebst du um Schönheit by Clara Schumann, and I loved this song so much. In fact, it was one of the songs that we had in our wedding. <laughs> this song was composed in 1840, and my 1860s corset was the closest I had to that time period. Maybe this means I should make an 1840s corset. most comfortable singing in this corset. Now that might be because I have worn this corset more than the others and I'm just a little more used to it. I did not feel restricted in my breathing at all and I had absolutely no discomfort whatsoever. I would give this corset a 10 out of 10 for comfort and a 10 out of 10 for breathing and singing ease. I'm so glad that I did this little experiment. I found it very interesting and enlightening. I was very surprised that the most comfortable corset, the Regency corset, which is not as structured, doesn't have as many bones, that that one was the least comfortable to sing in. Now, this might be a personal thing and that might just be because of my body type and my body shape and the re that's the reason why that one was the most comfortable. You might have different results singing in different corsets. I had an absolutely fantastic time recording these songs. I'm... <sighs> I can't wait until live performances and live theater are a thing again. <laughs> I have missed performing. If you would like to check out my accompanist Vera's channel, I will link that down below. She's an amazing accompanist and she's an amazing pianist. If you'd like to help artists in need, please consider donating to one of the wonderful charities that help out artists theater workers, and technicians during this very difficult time. I've linked a few down below, including the Artists Relief Initiative, the Actors Fund, and Theater Artists Relief Fund. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't, if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload, which is every Friday. Hit that little bell icon. And if you'd like to support the channel further, I have a coffee account and that is linked down below. Next week, I am beginning my 1860s project, so I hope you will join me for that. And I will see you again on our next sewing adventure. Bye!